Hello and welcome to the third and final Adobe Premiere Basics tutorial. In today's session we're going to be looking at adding transitions, adding titles uh, and we'll also be finally exporting the project into an MP4 format. So we'll look at transitions first. So to apply a transition we're going to go to the effects tab that we used in the last session. So last time we looked at the video effects folder within there, but this time we're going to be looking at the video transitions folder that's at the bottom. And this is also categorized into different transition folders. Now, a lot of these don't work very well. Um, I think they look a bit cheap in some cases, but you'll probably most likely use the dissolve, which is the most common transition you'll probably apply other than the cut that's already applied to your videos already. So open the dissolve folder. Uh, you'll see cross dissolve there is in blue and that's the most common transition you'll use so if so if i want to apply this what i'm going to do is i'm going to click and drag similar to how i dragged with the effects i'm going to then apply that this time between the two clips that i want to put it on and um, so i'm not putting it in the center i'm putting it between the clips or i could put it in the end if i want it to fade to black so i'm going to show you what happens when i put it between two i'm going to let go can see that fades the two clips together. Uh, I'm going to delete that and I'm going to this time apply that to the end of the clip. Let's just zoom in a bit here. So applying it to the end will just fade it to black. Now you can change the length of this transition by selecting the end of the transition and you can make it shorter or larger. When it's larger, the transition will occur much more slowly. You might want to play around with some of these other transitions, but as I said, the most common transition you'll, you'll use will be the cross dissolve or the cut. Now with that in mind, let's then look at titles. Now you might use the title for something like the film's title itself. You might want to put the location of where the film takes place, or you might want to uh, put the credits. Maybe it's a title sequence or the credits at the end. Titles will become uh, an integral part of your editing process, so you'll need to know how to use titles uh, with most of your projects that you make. So to apply text, the easiest way to do this and to get all the necessary uh, windows we need to apply text is to rearrange our workspace. And we did that in the very first tutorial at the start. So to do it for text, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Window, Workspaces, and I'm going to select Captions and Graphics. And that will rearrange our workspace into a um, into a workspace that allows us to put text in quite easily. So, depending on where you want the text to be, I'm going to move the marker to where I want the first title to be placed. So I'm going to move the marker to, for example, this shot here. And I'm going to put my text on this particular shot. I'm going to select this type tool here, where our tools are, because our tools are now moved up to here. I'm going to select the type tool, and we're going to create a text box within our frame there. And then we're going to type in what I want the title to be called. So I'm just going to put the uh, a cast uh, starring down, for example. And I'm going to highlight that. And you can see when I've created that text box, it's cr I've got a load of properties I can change on the right-hand side here. So I'm going to change the font. I'm just going to go for something quite bold so it's easy for everybody to see. Um, I'm going to change the colour. Just change, change something really bright so you can see very clearly. And then we're going to change the size a bit there as well as. I don't really like that one. Let's just change something else to. Let's go just for a little bit. So we can change our properties here. And if I set the arrow tool, I can then move this text box to wherever I want it to go. And you can see it's created the title on my, uh, on my video layer here. So you can see it's appearing above shot four. And like the sniper scope that I applied in the previous tutorial session, I can make that as long or as short as I want it to be. So I'm going to make sure it's the same length as shot four, for example, on this one. And at the moment, that will just play when that sh when that title appears. Now, with the transitions I went through before, we can actually combine our transitions with our text by just dragging and dropping. A transition on the ends of the title and all that will do 
is fade the text in and out. So let's play that back now. Right. So that's a quick way to create your text manually, and you can then apply transitions to do certain effects with it. Now, there are some presets that we can also use as well as. Um, if you select the Browse category here on this right-hand window, you can see numerous different text styles that you could use within your own uh, project. So if you want to apply one of these, all you have to do is drag and drop this onto wherever you want it to go in your timeline. I'm going to let go. At the moment, the text will just, uh, let's put it over here. The text will just appear with the default text that, I, that is selected. And you can change the text within the preset by just selecting the type tool and you can put whatever you want in. For now, I'm just going to remove that. So for now, uh, have a go at putting some text within your project. As I said, you might want to put a title of your film in there. You might want to put your credits in there. You might want to put the location of where the film is being, uh, taking place. Totally up to you, but try and get some text within the, uh, your project as it will be a key skill going forward. So the, before I go on to exporting, I just want to show you a few additional little tips that uh, are quite useful. So I'm going to re rearrange my workspace back to the editing layout. And now I'm going to select uh, this razor blade tool. So this is quite useful, the razor blade tool, because it lets you just split clips when they're already in the timeline. You don't have to select the in and out points. Again, you can just, once it's in the timeline, you can just split the clip once it's already in there. So as you can see, when you select the razor blade, it turns your mouse into a razor blade tool. And whilst that tool is selected, you can just choose whatever clip you want, click it, and it will slice that clip into two. That might be quite useful if you want to just move a clip somewhere else and trim it that way. Or if your track was particularly quite, if one of your tracks was quite long, you can just split it and delete the rest. Now, another little tip is how to. Uh, change the speed of a clip. Now the easiest way to do that is by simply cl right clicking on your clip and you'll be able to see speed duration is there. If you select that it brings up this window and speed is currently set at 100. If I make that more than 100 so say to 200 that's going to speed the clip up and watch the size of the clip when I do that. I'm going to press OK. You'll see it shrinks the size of the clip because it is much faster now. I'm going to undo that by pressing Control Z, and I'm now going to slow down the clip. To slow down, I'm going to go less than 100, so I'm going to go to 50, and again, watch the size of the clip. So it gets bigger. So it's if you are slowing down any clips, be aware it will in increase in size. So if you've got a shot immediately after that particular clip, it might in eat into that clip. So just be aware if you are slowing down clips, that it might bleed into another shot. Okay, so exporting. So when you're submitting a piece of work, you cannot submit the Premiere project file. It has to be a video file that can be accessible to others to be able to view. So to do that, we're going to save it as an MP4 file. And that is, we do that through exporting. So we can select export at the top. You can even go file and export media, but you should be able to see export there already. So I'm going to select export. And when this window comes up, we, can, we need to change a few settings on here. Now, we're going to change the file name, but we can also change the location where it's saving. And by selecting the location where it's saving, you can also change the file name in that step as well. as. So to change the location of where you're saving it to, select the blue text. And you can choose where you're saving this. As I said, you can also change the file name here. So let's call this video... Tutorial. I'm going to press save. And you can see here it's changed the file name there. And we know the location of where we're saving it. It's important you know where you're saving it. I recommend you save your files to the O drive so it's more accessible to others if they need to access it. But it's really important you know where you're saving it regardless. You, if you save it to your area, AQ area, that's fine as long as you know where you're saving it to. So when you upload it to Google Classroom or Google Drive, you know where to find it. Now, the other setting we need to make sure we are changing it to is the format. 
the format must be set to H.264. So if it's not set to that, just scroll down and find H.264. There's an H.264 Blu-ray, but H.264 is the ideal format. If you select that, that means it will export it as an MP4 file. Now, before we press export, it, you need to be aware that if you've got any in and out points on your timeline, so it looks like this, it will only export that selection. So please make sure if you are exporting, you make sure you export the entire sequence unless you are all purposely exporting a certain part and make sure it's all selected. Okay. If you can't see any in and out points on this part, that probably means it's exporting all of it anyway. So once you've done all that, you can now press export. That will export the project. Just be aware the length of time it takes to export depends on three different things. One is how fast the computer is. Two, how long your video is. So if you've made a 20 minute epic, it will probably most likely going to take around 20 minutes to export. The other thing would be how many effects you've applied to your film. So if you've applied multiple different effects, it probably will take a bit longer to export as well as. So it's all worth bearing in mind if you're working to a deadline that you need to make sure you have time to export. So once that's exported, you should be able to then access the file wherever you've saved it. It's always worth checking the file after you've exported it, just to make sure it's all there. Once you've done that, you then need to upload it to wherever you need to. So in the case of this project, we can upload our project to wherever it is on Classroom. There's a section here to upload your exported edit where you can attach the file from wherever you've saved it. And that concludes today's Premiere tutorial. If there's anything that I've not covered that you'd probably like to know more, a bit more about, please let me know by contacting me. Other than that, see you next time.